So you may have heard of the secret oath of the Jesuits. I looked into that and I, what I found is this um, book called the Monita Sacrita. It's on openlibrary.org and it was written by an ex-Jesuit and um, it was published originally in the year 1723. And I didn't read the whole thing, but I just skipped through it. And so I just want to share a few things here. Um, if you want to look more closely into it, I'll leave the link below. So it says the greatest possible care must be taken that these instructions do not fall into the hands of strangers. But if this should happen, let it be denied that these are the principles of the society and let such denial be confirmed by those of our members whom we are sure know nothing of them. So it's saying there are some people within the order itself who don't know the ultimate agenda, which makes sense because we know a lot of um, organizations do that. A lot of secret societies do that. Chapter one, it says, in order to render itself acceptable to the inhabitants of a place, the object of the society will be of great service. It is necessary to discharge the most humble duties in hospitals to visit the poor and the afflicted and prisoners that the principal inhabitants may be led to admire and love our people. So I'm just going to skim through what I've highlighted in here. And then it says, and cause them to be more liberal towards us. Um, and then it says, all must learn the same outward manner. Be cautious in buying land. Let this be done in the names of some trusty and secret friends. Let the purchases which are adjacent to our colleges be assigned to colleges at a distance, by which means it will be impossible that princes or magistrates can ever have certain knowledge of the revenue of the society. So, I mean, they're trying to hide their revenue. And then it says, let the greatest amount be always extorted from widows. Um, and let what is contained in the Roman treasury be kept secret. And this reminded me of Matthew 23, where it says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Um, and make long prayer for a pretense. I mean, that sounds to me like most of the church leaders that are in existence now. I mean, there's probably a few that are truly sincere, but most that I've seen they all use the same vocal inflections while they're doing it. So, I mean, you can tell that they're, that they're, they are reciting these prayers just to conform to a community. And it actually says that right here in verse five of Matthew 23, but all their works they do is to be seen by men. Um, in other words, they're just doing it to be accepted by other people. It says they love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But Jesus says, do not be called Rabbi because all of you are brethren and um, do not call any human father. Your father is in heaven. Neither be called masters. He that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And then, he, and then again, he says, woe unto you hypocrites for you devour widows houses and then isaiah 10 also talks about this it says woe to them that decree unrighteous decrees and that write grievousness which they have prescribed that widows may be their prey and then it says without me they shall bow under the prisoners and they shall fall under their slain because of course all throughout the biblical text it says okay their judgment is coming um and so this 18th century book right here supposedly translated from the Jesuit secrets themselves from an ex-Jesuit um, says that the greatest amount should always be extorted from widows and let what is contained in the Roman treasury be kept secret. Okay, well, everybody knows that the Roman treasury is filthy rich now. That's not a secret anymore. And we know the Jesuits vow their allegiance to the Pope above all. So their success at gathering wealth, which is what that book was talking about, is is pretty much evident at this point. It's not a secret anymore, although they originally said they were trying to keep it secret several hundred years ago. I mean, this is the crown of, of jewels. Apparently, it has sapphires, rubies, emeralds, and other gems covering it. Their robes, we know, are made of fine silk and linen, or fine linen and silk. And I'm not an expert on this, but I, in just a short search, I found at least three different thrones that the popes sit on which I don't know why anybody needs to sit on a throne I'm just I'm 100% certain that Jesus 
would not be sitting on a throne while people are lying in the street homeless and starving to death. I mean, and, I, and a true representative of Jesus wouldn't do that either. And I think we pretty much all can see that, I mean, at this point. And so they, the agenda that the Jesuits had in this book, clearly they have been successful at that because their agenda was to acquire as much wealth as possible for the church and um, to do it at any means necessary. And so it's clear that they, they were successful at that, that they acquired their wealth and their status. Very successful at that. Um, so, and this pretty much explains that they used really evil means of doing that. And then it says here in chapter two, every means must be employed at the beginning that we may gain the ears and minds of princes and leading men so that there may not be any who may dare to rise against us. Um, and then it says their evil deeds interpret them favorably under the pretext that is for the common good. Not only that, it says right here, if the prince begins to do anything that's not acceptable, he must be encouraged and urged on. And it says here, those who are of great authority in the state, they must be used in subduing and restraining the sort of people who are oppressed to our society. So they're going to use the government um, to get rid of their their enemies or which are probably the good people in the world, the people that don't want to be part of it. Um, and then it says, let our people so direct princes and illustrious men that they may appear to aim only at the greater glory of God for their aim must not be, must not immediately, but gradually be directed to political and secular dominion. So very slowly over time, they're saying they want to take over the governments basically. Um, and then here, this is another one. Um, that's especially bad. It says greater efforts must be made against those who attempt to set up schools for the education of youth. Let it be shown to princes and magistrates that these people will cause disturbance unless they are prevented. It's talking about people that just want to help children. They're to be demonized. Um, and then it says here um, concerning winning over rich widows to the society. It says that they down here. um they're going to do all these things that they may be more easily withdrawn from the conversation of visits and, and suitors. So they want these widows to, to remain lonely so they can take all their wealth and property. Um, and then it talks about in what manner widows are to be secured and their property disposed of. So this pretty much explains why Jesus kept talking about widows all the time, saying those who, you know, devour widows' houses. This is it right here. And then it says here... Um, let the mothers be instructed to annoy their children, even from infancy with reproofs, castigations, etc. And especially when daughters are grown up, let them be refused ornaments and a parable, apparel suitable to them. Then it talks about how they increase their revenue by accentuating those who are poor within their community, but keeping secret those who are wealthy. And I mean, that just shows you that they don't even take care of their own. They simply use their destitute to advance their own agenda. And then it says it's necessary to dismiss as an enemy whoever has alienated those who are devoted to the church or persuaded any rich person or any person well disposed to leave. And also it's necessary to dismiss those who show greater affection for their relatives when disposing of their property. So if someone wants to leave their house to their child, for example, then this society will not accept them and dismiss them as an enemy for simply wanting to give their own property to their children. Um, and personally, when I was looking at this, the first thing I thought of was that this is the binding of the tares right here, because obviously these the, they're they're taking in people that are really evil and 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 making enemies of those that are actually good people. And I mean, it, it just immediately reminded me of Matthew thirteen, which says, "Gather." first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them in other words bind them in bundles in order to burn them i mean that's symbolic but we know these texts are telling us a nuclear event is coming that's the burning and some will a great multitude will be saved from that a multitude that can't be counted but before that the tares the bad seed will be bound together in bundles so i mean that's that's just what this seems like to me because um, if you continue reading this, you'll see they, they're di dismissing good people and keeping the bad. Um, so they dismiss those who care for their relatives right here. And then not only that, they actually harass those people. Um, it says, 
okay, those people that care about their relatives, well, well we're going to dismiss them. Um, but, but that they may not afterwards complain of the cause of their dismissal, which was that they cared for their own family, then um, let them not be dismissed immediately. Instead, let them be harassed with chapters and public censures and let them be restrained from recreation and con conversation with strangers. Let them be deprived until they are driven to murmuring and then let them be dismissed as persons pernicious to others by bad example. Um so, and then it goes on, it says they will also do this kind of thing to those who know their secrets. First, let them be persuaded to promise in writing that they will never write or speak anything injurious to the society, but at the same time, let the superiors preserve in writing their evil inclinations, failings, and vices, which they themselves have at some time given according to the custom of the society. So it's talking about their confessions right there. Um, their, their Catholic confessions will be used against them. Then it says, um, it says, this is what's done to those who simply know their secrets and are dismissed. I mean, they might not even tell anyone the secrets their whole life, but just because they know some of the secrets, this is what is done to them. It says they are discredited and harassed um, simply because somebody suspected that they might tell the secrets later, not because they actually did anything. And by, and, um, by the way, this is still happening in our own day and age. I've been talking about that. I just uploaded a video on it. Um, it's called organized stalking and harassment. So this is still going on. Um, so I'll try to remember to link that below that video if you're interested in that. Um, and then it says, right here outright what they're doing is suppression so let me just let me just read through here it says it must be contrived that we may keep up an intimate correspondence with someone in the family in which the dismissed reside and as soon as anything is discovered blamable or deserving as censure let it be spread amongst the common people by means of persons of inferior degree who are attached to us so we're going to have somebody from the church spy on them hopefully somebody in their own family but it, you know, if not, they're probably going to use somebody else. And if something bad is discovered, we're going to, we're going to tell everybody in the community. And then it says, but if they commit nothing worthy of censure and conduct themselves in a praiseworthy manner, then let their virtues and actions, which are deserving of commendation, be depreciated by subtle insinuations and doubtful expressions until the esteem and confidence, which is attached to them is diminished. So basically, if you can't find anything bad on them, just make it up. You know, just just imply that they're doing bad things. Um, and then it just outright admits that it's suppression, that that's what they're doing. Um, okay. And then it's, it talks about recruiting the men, let them, um, let them associate with us, taking care that familiarity does not produce contempt. Well, I mean, why would it produce contempt unless they knew that, some, that what they were doing was bad? And then this is, an, I'm just going to go through the headings of these chapters right here. You can read it later if you want to. And then it says, showing publicly a contempt for riches. So even though they're trying to gather wealth, they want everybody else to think, oh, they're not interested in that. And it says it will be necessary to act more res. Oh, here's a good one. Um, after they, they manipulate the wealth out of those widows, it says they're, it's necessary to be more resolute, to act more resolutely and sternly with widows and other persons who have given most of their property to the society. So basically manipulate them into giving all their wealth and then treat them badly after that. Um, and they talk about their methods of advancing the society. Um, and then this, this at the end talks about the vows that their members take. I thought it was sort of strange how it says peculiar care in the education of boys. I'm not sure what that means. Then they promise special obedience to the Pope, um, blindly following whatever they're told to do by their superior who they believe holds the place of Christ. And in this one, this person is vowing to depose and kill all the kings and princes who don't believe in their ideology. So, um so that's pretty much it. We all know Pope Francis is the first Jesuit Pope. So um, we're just, there it is. That's, that's what the Jesuit agenda was hundreds of years ago. Um, at least part of it. And we've had ex-Jesuits come out recently and say that they 
were instructed to infiltrate Christian churches. So that's part of their agenda as well. Okay, I'm going to stop um, this video now. There's links below if you want to know more.